You know, there's an interesting story in the Bible, it's called Genesis, and in that story of Genesis, God creates the planet, God creates nature, and as an afterthought, more or less, God created people and put them into that mix. The unfortunate part of that story that's been carried around for the last couple of thousand years makes a situation that suggests that we and nature are separate from one another, that we came on our own separate from the planet. Well, this has been a big problem, you know why? Because we are actually created by nature. And the significance is, as the fate of nature goes, so does the fate of human civilization. And now comes the biggest problem is that humans have been destroying nature and precipitating what is called the sixth mass extinction of life. People just haven't caught on to the important part. If nature goes down, so does humanity go down, because we are nature. So maybe it's the wake-up call, a wake-up call that actually is a call from a long time ago. 10,000 years ago, the indigenous people on this planet already knew that nature was a garden and they were here as gardeners to help create the beauty of that garden. Well, let's wake up to that original belief because that's what's actually controlling our world. We have to stop using the earth and start working with the earth. That's how our evolution will take us into the future. An interesting concept of humans is that we are the smart, intelligent creatures of the planet and the rest has less or even no intelligence to it, just reflexive behavior at some point. But this is not true. As a matter of fact, here's an important point. The human body is made out of cells. The cells are the intelligent part of the human body. We are just a collective expression of cellular intelligence. Well, nature is imbued with all this intelligence. And the fact is this, when we start to take the stance that we have dominion over nature is when when our civilization started to fall from grace. Significance why is we are nature. We are not the controllers of nature. We're the ones that are supposed to learn how to live in harmony with a garden. Simple fact, a garden is not a battleground. But look what we did, we've turned it into a battleground. A garden is the height of cooperation. And this is what nature is asking humans to do at this moment. Wake up and start learning to live in harmony and cooperation with nature. Well, guess what, folks? You've been looking at yourselves as a single entity, a single organism, but when you look in the mirror and you see that single organism, let me adjust the understanding, and that is this. A human is actually a community of 50 trillion human cells. In fact, there's even more cells. We call it the microbiome. You're covered with 10 times as many microbiotic cells such as bacteria and fungus, and these are part of our life. Guess what, you can't live without them. So today's definition of a human is not just the human cells, but all the microbiota that live with us because without them, we will not survive. In human health, we're not talking about the individual health, we're talking about the health of a community of those 50 trillion cells. And then I go, well, they are miniature people, these cells. Why? They have all the same functions that you have, respiration, digestion, excretion, nervous system, even immune system. And so what's really important is your health is not based on one cell, it's based on 50 trillion cells living in community. And the significance of all that is then who's organizing this community? And it turns out the brain is organizing this community and the significance is very clear. The brain doesn't tell the digestive system how to do its job or the heart how to do its job. The brain is coordination and if we screw up this coordination, then the community begins to fall apart. So it comes down to a simple fact. Harmony in the community is health. Disharmony in the community is disease. And all of a sudden it says, if we want to heal ourselves, we don't have to worry about the genetics of the individual cells. It's actually the consciousness, the government, by which 50 trillion cells are living their lives. How are your thoughts these days? Are they positive? Are they negative? Why? because your thoughts are a political voice for 50 trillion citizens under your skin. And when your thoughts are in harmony, so is that community. So let's look at health in a different way. A political situation versus a molecular genetic situation. It's the politics of health that we understand. You know, when I was a professor in a medical school, what was I teaching? I was teaching about this organ system and this one, the respiration system, the digestive system, the musculoskeletal system. We looked at all of these as little independent systems to study. But guess what? Over time, we learned something very important. You cannot study an individual organ alone. It's a process of community where all the organs are integrated together. So there's a whole different approach today. It's called systems biology. I'm not just studying the heart. 
I'm studying the heart in relation to the brain, the heart in relation to the gut, the heart in relation to our behavior. So all of a sudden we start to see that every organ system is connected to every other organ system and they work as a system. And so the beautiful new view is not to study how a single organ works, because it's connected to everything else. And as a result, if we understand the interconnectivity of the organs, then we can understand the whole process that comes out of a human. So we're going from reductionism, studying the pieces, into holism, studying how all the pieces come together and create a whole. And that knowledge is empowering. And if you understand it, you can have more power in creating your life.